is known as Olmec civilization. This civilization occurs in the Gulf Coast of Mexico. When we speak of Mexico, however, you must get it very clear in your mind that we're not speaking of the shrunken Mexico of today. We speak of Mexico when it was the very core and heartland of Native American civilizations, a Mexico that included parts of Colorado, parts of Texas, parts of California, going right up to La Plata in Canada. This civilization known as Olmec was to touch all other civilizations in America, the Maya, the Toltec, the Aztec, etc. It was even to stretch right out into South America. What is very unusual about this civilization was that not only was it the mother of American civilizations, but it contained elements that were not just native to America, but was a fusion between the Native American and people coming from outside. The most significant of those outsiders were the Africans. We have very clear evidence in stone heads, in terracotta that are clay sculptures, as well as skulls and skeletons of an African physical type entering that native population somewhere between 948 and 680 BC. How do we know the date? It is because on one of the platforms in the holy center and capital of the Olmec world, a place called the Venta, we were able to date the stone head because they were rooted in a wooden platform where the Americans wow. worshipped, and we got this dating of 948 to 680 BC. Now, several people have wondered what kind of Africans these were. Who were these outsiders? These were largely Egypto-Nubian types, at least that type was in command. Because what we do find in the evidence is that not merely the presence of this physical type, which is African, but the presence of cultural elements, which we will talk about in this program, which are clearly of Egypto-Nubian origin. And the question arises, why do we include Egypt among classical African civilizations. There is now absolutely no doubt that the ancient Egyptian civilization was overwhelmingly African. They have found the kingdom of Tar Seti in the Nile Valley, where all the major elements, political and religious elements, spring out of the Egyptian, spring out of the south of Egypt, spring out of the Nubian world, at Kustal in Nubia, where we have about a dozen black kings reigning before the first Egyptian dynasty. Even the hieroglyphs, the writing system of the Egyptians, we find they have their roots in the Sudan. So that as the Africans move up from Nubia, they go into Egypt. So that we find the Africans, not only in the evening of Egyptian civilization, but in its very dawn. And we find them also at the, in the noon dynasty. This is very important because it's important to understand that the Egyptian thing, the Egyptian miracle, was not only to touch Europe, not only to touch Asia, but was to stretch out to America as well. Look at these two ones over here. At the beginning of this museum, I was made the information about from the picture, from where they got at the face. Then, when we was passing in the other house, you saw those pictures when they found the faces. This is one of the faces more beautiful. You can see the lips, the nose, the eyes. This is completely negroid face and the weight of this face is 25 tons we're wondering how they carry in that time from where they carry these rocks because it's solid mm. this head they bring from 134 kilometers far from here yes so it has been removed since no was that stone quarried where they found it? Or how far did they have to bring the quarry stone? They say from 100 kilometers far. Yeah. They call basalt. <laughs> basalt. Is it 
It is one solid piece. From 25 tons. What is the uh, relationship between this head and the uh, African present in the New World? Well, they showing it to you the exactly origin, Negroide, basic origin for these peoples. Why do you think they made, uh, they would call uh, a Negroid head? What would be the significance of that? To, to show in, uh, when these people was arrived to this continent. They tried to demonstrate when they arrived to America. And that was before Christ. About 1200 years BC was the time when they made these faces. Were these heads looked at as uh, gods, uh, as uh, priests? Uh, priest. They were priests. Priest. So then the African present here was one of priesthood or what? Priest. It was one of priesthood. Yes. Are there any other heads this size for the other races of peoples? No, this isn't the most principal. Uh, Dr. Van Sertiman, can you make a comment on this? I was asking him the significance of this in terms of the, the importance in the society of these heads, and he was saying that these were represented priests. Yes, these are, this is the priest king class because um, it, it would appear that these people were among the ruling uh, elite of the Olmec. Um, and these heads were revered. In fact, on one of them you have a flat top and you have an altar where people worship. And there is another one in which you have a, a sort of eustachian tube that runs from the ear through the mouth so that the priest could stand at the back of the head and talk to the people. It was a kind of oracular thing, you know, a sort of oracle. Um, this, 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 um, this is one of the, the great heads. And one of the things that you should note too, which many people do not note, is the way that thing falls along the ear. And also note the, the, the not the, the markings, the way it is cut, the way it is eroded on top, because the top of the, the helmet is also very important to note um, the things right on the, on, the, on the brow, the way these are formed, because this is the way in which, e even on top, I don't know how we can get on top there, but there's something quite interesting on the very top of the head. There are certain striations on the top of the head that are also significant. <laughs> Be close attention to everything that is said tonight and that you should prepare yourself to ask questions about the many troubling problems that we set pre-historic America. It is not really prehistoric, it is merely pre-Spanish, but anything that is pre-European is considered to be prehistoric. It is the really critical missing pages of history, both for America and for Africa. And what I want to do tonight, apart from touching on what we have seen within the last day or two, at Mitla and at Monte Alban, what I would like to do is to go on to make a summary of what we have achieved, what we have seen, what we have witnessed in the last week in Mexico. We began in Von Wutenow's studio. Make no mistake, there is no studio in the world where you will find such a collection of African physical types in ancient America. Many of you have not had the opportunity.